Here, I present to you orthodontic jaw wiring for weight control. I'm the developer of the OJW weight control appliance and the protocol to provide it. Obesity is a disease per se and is legion and epidemic and recognized as a precursor to a host of serious illnesses and other comorbidities which attend it, as I will show you later, some of which have oral manifestations and a host of other serious consequences. You can read my original research paper at the link shown above. OJW is a fixed intraoral appliance composed of orthodontic brackets bonded to the canines and premolars, preventing the ingestion of solid food with wires that limit the jaw opening to a maximum of four millimeters without causing any shifting or traction or extrusion on the teeth. Weight loss ensues when the patient adheres to a low calorie liquid diet, typically between 900 and 1200 calories. Speech is unimpaired. It bears no resemblance to IMF, intermaxillary fixation, what oral surgeons do, as you can see, where the teeth are locked together and speech is unintelligible. OJW became a reality when patients noticed that they lost weight when oral surgeons wired their teeth together to heal fractured jaws using a rather primitive, unsightly and painful method. Here are a few of my contributions. One, interlacing the teeth around brackets with the jaw approximating its physiologic rest position, which I named Rothstein's OJW position of mandibular weightlessness. Two, a robust, serious, informed consent. Three, criteria for selecting patients who are a good fit and avoiding those who are not. Finally, four, a research survey to assess safety and effectiveness. OJW is an intraoral appliance that is a safe, effective alternative to gastric surgery and medications that works by preventing the ingestion of solid food, typically referred to as junk or comfort foods, with wires that limit the jaw <clears throat> opening to a maximum of four millimeters. It is not prohibited in the dental code of any state. OJW is highly suitable for patients with CEEP, compulsive emotional eating problems, to regain control of excessive feeding habits. It allows normal speech and is harmless to the teeth, gums, and jaw joints. Its critics will point out that patients regain weight when the OJW is removed. And yes, in many cases that is true. However, that is true of each and every weight control method, not excluding gastric surgery, whose mortality rate is two deaths per thousand, 0.002%. It is the responsibility of the OJW weight control provider to select patients with care, obtain their informed consent, wire them, as you will see later, into Rothstein's OJW position of mandibular weightlessness, and then teach them how to rewire themselves, especially if they come from out of state, and rewire them every five weeks after being unwired for five days. In brief, the protocol is simple, a low calorie liquid diet, 900 to 1200 calories per day while being wired for five weeks and then unwired for five days. In brief, 5-5 five, five, LCLD, that is five weeks wired, five days unwired on a low calorie liquid diet. In dentistry, OJW weight control is used to treat the cause of OSA sleep apnea, whose most frequent etiology is obesity. Before OJW, dentists could only treat the symptoms of OSA snoring, 
with removable devices that open the airway by repositioning the lower jaw downward and forward a quarter of an inch. OJW can be used simultaneously with CPAP devices. CPAP stands for Continuous Positive Airway Pressure. OJW weight control is not explicitly or implicitly excluded in the code of dentistry in any state. The dentist is clearly not practicing medicine since he, she, does not diagnose obesity. It is a safe and effective alternative to weight control by medications and surgery. The position of the jaw is normal, that is, physiologic, as I'm going to demonstrate. It allows normal speech and may be helpful in some cases of TMJD. It is simple and inexpensive to fit a patient. Most importantly, I want to repeat that the diagnosis of obesity is made by the patient's physician and consequently the dentist is not practicing medicine. The dentist must coordinate with other members of a healthcare team who provide weight control services including the physician who diagnoses obesity, the patient's dentist who may request removal of the wiring from time to time, the dietitian who helps manage the low calorie liquid diet, and the psychotherapist who helps the patient understand their compulsive eating impulses and treats the depression often accompanying overweight issues. As a minimum, the dentist who provides OJW should feel comfortable bonding and removing brackets and have a desire to help the overweight with CEEP. Dentists are reluctant to provide a weight control service because they are too timid to broach the subject with their patients, unaware that 85% of the dental population accepts them as providers of such services. This was noted in the November 2010 Journal of the American Association of Dentists cover page article encouraging dentists to provide weight control. Enthusiastic providers must also believe it enhances their image and that they are comfortable providing it. I have made the concept of weight control by dental professionals a reality by virtue of authoring a research paper, providing this service to 250 people, creating a Facebook page for patients, a LinkedIn page for dentists, and a devoted website, and finally by authoring more than 50 articles on the subject and presenting this topic in a wide variety of venues, including the American Association of Orthodontists and the American Dental Association. There is no effective argument to counter the rationale that OJW weight control is a safe and effective, non-invasive, conservative alternative to weight control utilizing surgery and or medications. Patients who perceive they are being cared for by a team of professionals working in concert will be inspired to achieve their weight goals and maintain them. Once the patient has been wired into the OJW position of mandibular weightlessness, they should be encouraged to seek the expert assistance of dietary nutritionists to create balanced liquid diets as well as the help of psychotherapists to help them better understand and control their compulsive emotional eating urges. The dentist who provides OJW weight control must always keep in mind that she or he is solely responsible for maintaining the health of the teeth, gums, and jaw joints after placing an OJW appliance. However, comprehensive care may well warrant the supervision of a dietitian and advice from the psychotherapeutic counselor, as I noted previously. 
It bears repeating that in OJW, the wiring limits the vertical opening to about four millimeters and speech is unimpaired, while in IMF, intermaxillary fixation, what oral surgeons do, the teeth are locked together and speech is by and large unintelligible. Furthermore, elastics must never be used lest they cause traction and move the teeth. Here is the armamentarium you will need to do orthodontic jaw wiring for weight control. Three cross action tweezers to help you place the brackets. 12 brackets as shown, an instrument to position the brackets, adhesive, a scaler, 0.014 dead soft ligature wire, tools, to demonstrate wiring, a straw to help you achieve Rothstein's OJW position of physiologic rest, a Matthew needle holder, which I call a twister, a ligature cutter, a tapping hammer to help you press in vertical posts that stick out too far. You will need safety glasses and finally the take home kit for the patient. How to fit the appliance. Step one, bond the brackets, 12 in all. That takes 15 minutes. Step two, wire both sides. That takes 15 minutes. Step three, teach the patient how to remove and rewire themselves, especially if they live far from the office. That takes 30 to 45 minutes. The chair side assistance principal work is to apply etch and adhesive to each bracket in turn and pass it to the doctor who seats it firmly from the gingival, the gum side, to the incisal, the edge, and then removes the excess adhesive flash and then cures the adhesive with a simple blue light. Hello, I'm Dr. Ted Rothstein. Brooklyn Heights orthodontist and the inventor of orthodontic jaw wiring for weight control. Today, I'm going to demonstrate orthodontic jaw wiring in real time. When the OJW is done correctly, the jaws can move between two and four millimeters vertically and laterally. This is straw between the teeth. Take your wire and wrap it around number one. Then bring it around and under number two, over number three, and out to number six. Then take the top half of the wire, wrap it around number four, over five, and meet the strand at number six. Do a little twist with your finger. Take the twisting instrument, grab the two ends, wrap them four or five times, trim the tail, and tuck the tail out of harm's way. Remove the straw. Voila, orthodontic jaw wiring. My fellow professionals, thank you for your time. Now, I want you to say out loud, Mama, and note that your lips end up slightly touching. Note where your teeth are. They are about four millimeters apart. This is the wired position. The lower jaw is being held in position by the tonus of the masseter muscle. This is the position you are in normally 23 hours each day. 
Try speaking with your jaw in this position and note that it is quite easy and feels normal. This is Rothstein's position of mandibular weightlessness. You may find the next two slides familiar, even amusing. However, I place them here to remind you how subtle and complex mindless eating can be and allows me to point out that OJW is both a physical and mental reminder that you have chosen to distance yourself with a metaphorical gate that prevents you from ingesting comfort junk food. Indeed, the OJW compels you to focus on the goal you chose it for, regaining control of compulsive eating, since now all the subtle reasons that drive you to eat compulsively are nullified by the OJW. Admittedly, eliminating solid foods for some compulsive emotionals is like a drug addict stopping cold turkey. But that is exactly the reason they choose OJW. They are dedicated and passionate. They are out of control and they know it. They are depressed. They need to act. Look at because it's there and it's too hard to give it away or throw it away. I experienced this one recently. It was squares of salty, sweet, chocolate-coated caramel candy, an obscenely large jar of them. I was sneaking one every day and burdened with guilt. My solution? I asked my wife to hide them. There is a time to eat and a time not to eat. OJW is a not so subtle way to remind them that those lame excuses for eating I noted above are the voices of anxiety and depression, not hunger, that are moving them to eat when they are not really hungry. Like every weight loss method, OJW is fallible. After all, they can remove the wiring with a snip of the wire cutter I provide. That is why some patients need the help of counselors to help them understand the complexities underlying the cause of their eating compulsions or the excuses they construct that pave the way to that next forage in the refrigerator or pantry. In brief, OJW is a constant reminder of your passionate desire to achieve the weight loss goal you chose at the start. You see it in the mirror every morning and night, literally and figuratively. It's in your face all the time. Indeed, it's in your mouth. Take a look at this picture of the enemy. Donuts, double hamburgers, cheeseburgers, hot dogs, french fries, pizza, shakes. It's no surprise how easy it is to become addicted to such foods. They are rich in calories from the fats, carbohydrates, and sugars they contain. Have you ever noticed how tasteless those low-fat so-called light foods are? That is why these foods are called comfort food. They are also called junk food. OJW prevents you from eating them. That is, unless you first liquefy them in a blender. Now, who's going to do that? The answer is patients who need psychological counseling. Slide 31. The Japanese call it junk fudo. Only 3% of Japanese have a body mass index BMI over 30, the international standard for obesity, whereas 30% of Americans do. A total of 65% of Americans have a BMI over 25, making them overweight, but only 25% of the Japanese. It's because they eat less and exercise more. Of the eight harmful effects noted here, including depression, high bad cholesterol, higher risk of stroke and heart disease, and liver dysfunction, you might guess is increased tooth decay. I'm sure you are aware of the high cost of dental care. Weight control makes sense. I think you will find this next slide is amusing. 
Let's go see it. Here you see what 1,300 calories of junk food o comfort food looks like. Ironically, it was a gift, compliments of the Double Tree Hotel in Philadelphia, where I presented my work June 6, 2018, to the International Conference of Obesity, Nutrition, and Fitness as a keynote speaker. This slide and the next show the often seen consequences of prolonged injudicious compulsive eating habits. They are listed in the handout. As a dentist, I take special interest in OSA sleep apnea snoring. In my sample, indeed, 75% reported it, and in fact, 60% of those with sleep apnea are obese. Losing weight can cure obstructive sleep apnea in overweight patients, studies show. Indeed, losing weight is perhaps the single most effective way to reduce OSA symptoms and associated disorders. Knee and hip joint dysfunction was a not so obvious surprise finding for me, but it makes perfect sense since they bear the body's weight. Carpal tunnel syndrome was a complete surprise. However, I researched it and sure enough, it was true. Here are some more. Type two diabetes, which afflicts one in three Americans, doubtless a reflection of the obesity problem rampant among our population. Prolonged hypertension leads to shorter life. Some studies indicate somewhere between two and five years. Depression is very common. In my sample, 75% noted depression. Next slide. The increased risk of anesthetic deaths in gastric surgery is well known. 0.002% to be exact, especially in surgery of the morbidly obese. Here are the criteria I use when selecting patients. The most important being that they are dedicated to and passionate about achieving and maintaining a weight goal. In addition, I use three forms, an informed consent, a medical dental history form, and a self-assessment profile form to help patients decide if OJW is a good choice for them. Here are the others. Slides 36, 37, and 38 present guidelines to identify unsuitable OJW candidates. I'll read just a few on the next two slides and conclude with slide 38. Items N, O, and P are not good candidates for obvious reasons, and persons who drink alcohol excessively and might throw up and take vomitus back into their airway are highly unsuitable, as well as persons who have a BMI greater than 40, except when specifically referred by bariatric gastrointestinal surgeons who want them to demonstrate that they are capable of losing weight. Most people on liquid diets lose weight. Oral surgeons prove that. OJW empowers a liquid diet and heightens resolve. You see it, you feel it. It prevents you from eating the comfort, high caloric, minimally nutritious junk food. Ultimately, nothing succeeds like success. You are inspired by your own success and continue exerting the same controls without needing OJW to maintain the new way of calorie control. You wean back to a solid food diet and the OJW is removed. In addition, compulsive emotional eaters regain control of their sense of spiraling out of control once they begin a liquid diet. 
they feel their anxiety hunger pains begin to diminish and see they are losing weight and their self-esteem and self-image begin to grow and they become even more determined to succeed. Consequently, as they say, nothing succeeds like success. That's how OJW works. Finally, it's comforting for the SEEP patient to feel that their physician, dentist, dietitian, and therapist are on the same page, united by their combined skills to assist them to achieve and maintain the goal weight they stated in the informed consent at the start of OJW. And surrounded by caring authority figures, they are more likely to attain their goal weight and maintain it. Please take note of the forms patients must provide. One, the medical dental history form. Two, the informed consent. Three, the self-assessment image form. Note especially the physician's release. The release permits the dentist to fit the patient with an appliance. Inherent in it is a diagnosis of obesity and explicit permission to begin a long-term, low-calorie liquid diet. It simply says, this patient may begin a long-term, low-calorie liquid diet. These nine simple words are your release to fit the patient with OJW weight control. I tailored the medical dental history form specifically for OJW patients. Hence, do you know what a panic attack is? It's there because the actual experience of having wires for the first time is akin to being set down in a totally unfamiliar place, like Times Square in New York City on New Year's Eve for the first time. One might very well have a panic attack. Asking them this question adheres to advice that forewarned is forearmed. I pay much attention to would-be patients' responses. What if they have teeth that are missing that are used for the OJW wiring? Or they are wearing removable partial dentures? That would make them ineligible for OJW. Here is the questions part of an actual informed consent. It tells me that Carla has chosen OJW and is informed regarding its potential risks and benefits. It begins with basic questions. What is your age, height, weight, and goal weight? Carla, 41, 5'5", 185, goal, 130 pounds. She wants to lose 50 pounds. She is fiercely dedicated, motivated, and passionate. We're going to meet her just 11 slides further along. Note that Carla is willing to dedicate six months passionately. She will lose about 25 pounds every three months or 50 pounds in six. That is her goal. Carla completed all her forms, including her contact information immaculately. Such attention is a good indication of her cooperation. Indeed, my experience is that persons who complete forms precisely and neatly and timely are the ones who will be dedicated and passionate. They are likely to follow the OJW protocol and attain and maintain their weight goal. Remember the protocol? 55LCLD. The informed consent I created for OJW weight control is exhaustive. The content from these two paragraphs makes the patient understand that using elastics in place of wire may well cause her teeth to shift unfavorably and that she may need a different dentist to remove the OJW brackets at additional cost to her if she lives far from the office. In content number three, she affirms that she has read 
and understands who is a poor candidate for OJW. Moreover, she affirms that she is a good candidate and signs off on that declaration. I am assured she understands the risks and benefits of my weight loss service. The third form is the patient's self-assessment profile containing many of these self-vision awareness statements. Look at the third down. You realize the need to provide a physician's release. Then look at the last one. Nobody seems to understand the seriousness of the problem of compulsive emotional eating. Persons who inquire about the OJW weight control service ask many important questions, FAQs. At my dedicated website, OJW for Weight Control, you can see all of them, but right here are the four most important and the answers. Is speech normal? Yes. Is the jaw position likely to cause discomfort or pain? No. Will I lose weight? Yes. Is it safe? Yes. Finally, all patients are provided with a six-page troubleshooting manual providing guidance to handle every problem that might occur, the most common of which is a detached bracket. Here are the first five of ten facts that make OJW an excellent method to choose for weight control, one that will really help patients achieve their weight loss goal, maintain it, and not cause them harm. Let's spell out a few. One, it has no bad reviews. Two, it is safe and predictable. Three, the jaw is positioned naturally. And the teeth never shift because the lower jaw is always in the mama position where the mandible is weightless and speech is clear and the teeth, gums, and jaw joints remain healthy. Finally, the dentist's responsibility as part of the healthcare team is clearly defined, being limited to maintaining the health of the teeth, gums, and jaw joint. Meet Carla, who I mentioned previously. She is motivated and dedicated and passionate about losing those 50 pounds to get to her goal weight. Here to refresh your memory are Carla's statistics, weight and goal facts. Age 41, height 5'5", weight 185, goal weight 130 pounds. It was June 11th, 2017, and Carla came from Abilene, Texas. She is a respiratory therapist. Her oral exam, panoramic x-ray, and TMJ were all within normal limits. Hi, I'm Carla, and I'm going to get my OJW done by Dr. Ted. And this is a little trial before this procedure to see how I speak. So that's it. See you later. I love my OJW. I recommend it. Here is a brief summary of my presentation. I have shown how a weight control service is integrated into the dentist's office under a protocol that requires being part of the healthcare team and conforms to every state's code of dentistry. Dentists can now choose to treat the cause of sleep apnea, in most cases, obesity, 
and in many cases that results from SEEP, compulsive emotional eating problems. The healthcare team consists of the patient's physician, dentist, dietitian, and when warranted, psychotherapeutic counselor. The surgeon may opt to begin conservatively by referring some of his patients to begin weight control by a less invasive method. I will now show you that the general public accepts and welcomes dentists as providers of weight control services. Postscript. I carried out an extensive research study questionnaire consisting of 94 questions sent to a bit more than 100 OJW patients in 2009. I asked fundamental basic questions related to the safety, effectiveness, and public acceptance of OJW weight control. The results were compiled into a full-length article manuscript and submitted to the AJODO and the JADA. Alas, it was not accepted for publication. Since then, I have updated the manuscript by adding pertinent articles, all of which favored jaw wiring as a method of weight control. You can read the manuscript by following the hyperlink noted above. Question 58. Given that vomiting could lead to the taking of vomit back into your airway, leading to effects ranging from choking and possibly to death, please state your position from the list below. I will read you just the first three answers and you can read a few more for yourself. 55.6%. The informed consent I filled out told me all I needed to know. 44%. I was warned of that, so I carried my wire clippers with me at all times. 38.9%. It is possible, but highly unlikely. Question 63. Why did you choose the OJW method to begin with? 78.9%. My being overweight was causing me to be depressed. 68.4%. I felt this approach might help me bring my compulsive overeating under control. 63.2%. I realized that my excessive weight could have serious health-related consequences. 57.9%. I was finally able to locate a dental professional who could provide the OJW weight control service. Slide 66, question 21. My choice below indicates how I feel about OJW for the control of weight in compulsive overeating. 70% OJW is both safe and effective. My work demonstrates that dental professionals are welcome by the public as providers of weight control services as part of a healthcare team. That includes dietitians, physicians, psychotherapists, and bariatric surgeons. OJW is a fixed intraoral biomechanical appliance and protocol for controlling compulsive emotional eating problems, CEEP in carefully selected patients who are obese or heading towards obesity that help them start regaining control over compulsive eating habits with potentially grave health consequences. If members of the dental profession step forward 
and recognize their right and responsibility to care for selected patients who meet the criteria of being overweight or obese based on the diagnosis of the patient's physician, the leaders of the AAO and ADA will be obliged to clearly define the dental professional's role in providing this service, just as they did when problems of snoring and sleep apnea first came to the attention of dental professionals. Indeed, weight control may become the gold standard for treatment of OSA sleep apnea.